United States Ambassador to Japan Caroline Kennedy says U.S. technology can help recovery efforts at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Japanese workers at the plant are struggling to dismantle the crippled reactors. People around the world, I watch Officials from the two countries are holding two days of talks on how to cooperate. Kennedy said business people from both sides should have the opportunity to pool their expertise. We hope this forum will be a chance for Japanese and U.S. firms to share lessons learned and discuss how United States technology can contribute to further recovery. Representatives from 26 U.S. companies with experience in disposing nuclear waste are taking part. They explained what they can do to help the cleanup. Members of Japanese businesses operating in Fukushima also attended the talks. An embassy official said the U.S. government supports the entry of American firms in the cleanup effort. The official said the companies have extensive experience in decommissioning. I appreciate the tenor of the conversations. Uh, I think it will actually yield results uh, before the end of the year, and I look forward to continuing this dialogue in the months ahead. Thank you very much, everybody. Sometimes just think funny things. At Tokyo Electric Power Company want to restart a pair of nuclear reactors on the Sea of Japan coast. Government regulators say the utilities first needs to conduct an additional survey on the ground beneath the power plant. TEPCO officials say that will take as long as six months. The officials had asked the Nuclear Regulation Authority to conduct safety checks for restarting the reactors at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant. But regulators said the utility needs to make sure the ground beneath the plant is stable. They say TEPCO should check whether 23 geological faults in the area are active or not. Government inspectors visited the site to check TEPCO's survey plan. They assessed locations where workers planned to dig. Team leader Kunihiko Shimazaki said the plan seems largely acceptable. TEPCO officials announced a timetable for completing the survey. We think the survey will take between three or four months to five or six months. TEPCO officials are aiming to restart the reactors as early as... Once again, Japan springs into action to make all of your augmented reality dreams come true. Regulators have started an examination of geological faults at the biggest nuclear plant in Japan. Executives at Tokyo Electric Power Company are hoping to restart nuclear reactors at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant. The regulators are checking whether they can approve a survey plan submitted last month by TEPCO. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi explains. The Nuclear Regulation Authority's team began the two-day survey on Monday at the plant in Niigata Prefecture. They looked at geological formations at several spots around the plant. Kashiwazaki Kariwa is one of the world's largest nuclear plants in terms of total output. Typical officials want to restart two of the seven reactors from July. They applied to the government last September for a safety screening. But the reactor buildings and other parts of the facility sit on top of 23 known geological folds. So regulators asked the company to conduct a survey to check whether the faults are active or not. New regulations ban the installment of nuclear reactors and other key facilities above active faults. TEPCO officials say they have so far detected no faults that could become active in the near future. Japan's government approved, in principle, TEPCO's 10-year business plan, which relies on restarting reactors at the plant. The utility argues that restarting the reactors is essential if it's to turn its business around and dismantle reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. Operators must also gain approval from local communities to restart any reactors.
The governor of the prefecture that hosts the plant has criticized Tepco's plan because it fails to put top priority on safety. TEPCO hasn't learned from the Fukushima accident. It's not qualified to operate nuclear plants. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has investigated faults beneath seven nuclear plants across Japan. The NRA's commissioner, Kunihiko Shimazaki, says he has learned the details of TEPCO's survey plan from his visit. We discussed where TEPCO should conduct their survey and whether they should hold further checks. Following its examination, the NRA will decide whether to approve TEPCO's survey. After the survey is completed, regulators will check the safety of the plant to decide whether they will allow TEPCO to resume operations. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. Thank you for watching this video. I'm Masayuki Ono of the Tokyo Electric Power Company. I deeply apologize to the people in the areas surrounding the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station and to the broader society for the tremendous inconvenience and anxiety caused by the accident at the power station. Hideko Hayashi is on her way to Futaba to visit her family's gravesite. She's back in her hometown wearing protective gear. The radiation level is over 10 times the government set standard. Hideko has decided to rent an apartment in Saitama and live out her days there. She's coming to the grave to apologize to her ancestors for not keeping her promise to return someday. Your ancestors, here's some sake, which you all loved. I've been at the shelter for some time, but I'm moving out soon to take a new step. Please keep watch over me. After visiting the grave, she goes to her home. It's less than a kilometer from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. There's one more thing she wants to do. I'm home. The front door is broken, and in its place is a huge cobweb. Animals have ransacked the place. Hideko goes toward a room in the back. She wants to find something that's precious to her. I have to take this with me, no matter what. It's an object of worship from the household Buddhist altar. Buddha's spirit is in this. She had left an image of Buddha at the house, hoping it would protect the place until the day she could move back. But she's decided not to return, so she's taking it to Saitama instead. I'm thinking about putting this in my new apartment to protect me. I'm not coming back here. Hiriko bids farewell to her home for the last time. This is a photo of units 1 to 4 taken from the air. As explained in the previous series, groundwater near the protective bank east of the turbine buildings was found contaminated with radioactive material. Therefore, we are currently implementing a measure that will prevent groundwater leakage into the port. This measure is to seal the soil near the protective bank by injecting liquid glass, which makes soil solid and impermeable. 
This is a map of the underground tunnels called trenches on the sea side of the turbine buildings. The trenches extend from the turbine buildings to locations near the protective banks. Highly radioactive contaminated water that had accumulated in the basements of the turbine buildings following the accident has also accumulated in these trenches. Leakage of highly radioactive contaminated water from inside these trenches is considered the cause of the contamination of groundwater near the protective bank. Immediately after the accident, there was an incident where contaminated water that leaked from the trenches of Units 2 and 3 leaked into the port. We then stopped the leakage by blocking the parts of the trenches near the leakage spots, filling the areas with concrete. Two hundred and seventy thousand Japanese are still living in temporary housing three years after the earthquake and tsunami. The stress of being uprooted has caused some of them to become withdrawn or depressed, especially men. Volunteers are doing what they can to help. More from NHK World's Kazuaki Hirama. These temporary housing units in the city of Miyako, Iwate Prefecture, are home to about 100 evacuees. Recently, a volunteer group organized a series of massage sessions in one of the communal areas. The idea was to give all the residents a chance to interact. However, the only participants were women. The community director had announced that he hoped men would also attend the event. But the men here don't leave their units much and none showed up. Other events have been organized such as dinners or karaoke evenings, but none have attracted men. I hope you can join in the massage events sometime. I'd rather just relax at home. It's all women at these events, and being the only man, I'd have nothing to talk to them about. At a recent seminar, one researcher reported that 26% of women evacuees say they ease their stress by chatting with others. But only 5% of the men do. She also found that male evacuees who have lost their jobs are the most withdrawn, preferring to stay inside doing nothing. For one evacuee in Tokyo, an outlet has come through. Mitsuaki Okura used to run a produce shop in the town of Namie, Fukushima Prefecture. He has no idea if we will ever be able to go back to his store. With no work or purpose, Okura rarely left his room. He just spent his days folding paper cranes out of candy wrappers, drinking to forget his sadness. I miss my home more than anything else. The toughest thing has been not being able to go home. Making the cranes helps me forget. It was volunteer worker Keiko Satani who encouraged Okura to start going out more from his room. In the course of her conversations with Okura, Satani learned that before the disaster, he'd been a keen gardener. He kept talking about how he wanted to grow something, to get his hands in the ground, to become wrapped up in something. The local social welfare council had an empty plot of land near Okura's temporary housing. Satani's team came up with the idea of having Okura and other evacuees <laughs> cultivate the land to grow vegetables. It took Satani six months, but finally she persuaded Okura to get involved. You have to cut the roots before you wash them. Now he's become the leader of the project. It's thanks to Okura the garden has been a success. Okura has even started delivering the vegetables they grow to other evacuees. It's been a slow process, 
But now, some of the male evacuees are starting to find new meaning in their lives, growing hope along with their produce.